Thank you everybody for joining us today. Uh, today we will have a presentation on operationalizing your Google OR tools model. So our hosts today uh, will be Marius and Daniel from our decision science team here at NextMove. And they will do a quick orientation of the NextMove platform. We'll dive right into deploying an OR tools model to a remote infrastructure. And then we'll see some live demos of acceptance tests and shadow tests to really de-risk your rollout to production. And at the end, we will have some time for Q&A. So please feel free to use the chat function or the Q&A feature as well. And one note, if you are using the chat, make sure to toggle to everyone uh, instead of hosts and panelists, if you'd like the whole group to see our message. So with that, I will hand it over to Daniel and we will get started. Yeah, all right, thank you. Um, and welcome from my side as well. Um, yeah, let's jump right into uh, this presentation. Um, so first of all, I want to talk about the NextMove platform here. Um, we've built this platform um, to um, or to enable the user to build and test um, and deploy and operate decision models uh, within the platform. Um, and it allows users to enter at different levels of our product. Uh, so for example, you can use our uh, domain-specific models um, and customize and configure them with out-of-the-box constraints. Uh, and objectives um, that are then hooked into uh, our input JSON convention. Uh, but we also offer complete customization um, with our developer tooling to interact with our SDK. Uh, so you can use our CLI as a workflow management interface um, that initializes our templates, which then spawn a customizable project uh, using our Go or Python SDKs. Um, you can then customize these templates um, as needed and use our CLI again to um, deploy the customized version of your application uh, to NextMove Cloud and then use um, our console or front end um, to manage your model versions, um, test and visualize um, the results as well. So where does uh, the NextMove platform fit into your tech stack? Um, so this slide gives you a high level overview um, of, uh, of this. Uh, on the left side, um, you see several data inputs, which could be platform data, operational data, um, or something completely else um, relevant to your specific problem. Uh, in the middle, you see the NextMove platform here, which has an ex uh, which has an application layer um, for whatever use case you want. Um, there's an extensible optimization layer for different modeling and solving paradigms, and an infrastructure and operations layer for hosting, experimentation, and CI/CD. And on the right-hand side, um, you see your operations tooling, uh, which uses the solutions and plans that are generated by the NextMove platform uh, and um, pushes that um, information to the customer apps. So the place of the NextMove platform here in between uh, is something we consider as um, decision ops for decision models. Um, so what is decision ops? Um, it's an automated process that's manually audited um, for decision algorithm development. Um, and we believe here at NextMove that this is the way to scale your optimization teams. Um, so decision ops is um, similar to ML ops, which you might have heard before um, from the machine learning and data science space. Um, there's a similar level of importance put on having reproducible experimentation and a place for collaboration across teams. Uh, but there's a subtle difference here. So with our optimization models, uh, we don't need to train them. Um, we need to tune them, right? So we have uh, parameters with our solvers, there are parameters uh, with our models, um, and we need to tune them to find the best parameter setting um, for our models. Uh, the steps that you see here in, in, the, in this decision ops process um, is part of the talk today. So we will take a look at a few of these steps uh, and we're going to start with the develop step here. So as I mentioned before, um, we uh, with our platform, we offer you pre-built um, SaaS models, um, or you can create your custom uh, decision apps. Uh, and our vision here is that uh, you bring your model and integrate with our platform um, and spend your time building more models um, if, if necessary or if possible, um, and that you don't waste your time on tooling around these decision models. Um, for that, um, as mentioned, we offer out-of-the-box decision applications, uh, like for routing and scheduling use cases, uh, that you can use off the shelf um, from within our marketplace. But of course, um, that's not always um, really useful for your case. Uh, maybe you need to uh, have, a, uh, have more customization within your model. Um, and that's why we have our SDK, so that you can customize uh, your model uh, and recently re release the support of OR tools um, within our SDK 
um, or R tools um, is shit with a, a bunch of modeling tools um, for linear programming, mixed internet programming, um, constraint programming, and vehicle routing problems. Uh, and there are also a couple of solvers um, included, like Glob, Skip, uh, CPZ, and more. Uh, so you can use or R tools um, to solve use cases like routing, scheduling, packing, planning, assignment, and so on. Uh, and in order to um, show um, how you can use the OR tools models uh, within our platform, I'm handing it over to Marius uh, for a live demonstration here. All right. Thank you, Daniel. And also, hello from my side. Uh, let me quickly share my screen. This looks correct. Cool. So um, to catch you up, uh, we would expect you to already have installed Nextmove Cli, uh, which is you know, uh, kind of a preliminary for this one. And, uh, but otherwise we will start from scratch basically with an OR tools model. Um, so to do that, we do it like we usually uh, start, uh, which is next move SDK init, then dash T and we have a handy OR tools template. So let's go into that and quickly open it up so that I can show you around what this looks like. So that's, there's not a lot in this, um, which is neat. Uh, one of them, maybe let's, uh, Let's get you started on the input actually, so that I can explain quickly uh, what this example is about. So we have a knapsack problem here. We have a set of items that we want to put into our next step, knapsack while um, maximizing the value of it, uh, but still adhering to the weight capacity. So you can see there's a bunch of items defined like a cat and a dog, and they have values and weights. And that's what we're going to put into our knapsack. If you're familiar with uh, OR tools, then you already know uh, this code or could know, you know, a similar code, uh, which is uh, modeling the knapsack using uh, the MIP modeling uh, features of OR tools and then solving it with skip. So you can see that we're bas basically building all uh, the variable sets, then the constraints of weight, basically weight needs to be smaller equals than the weight capacity. We maximize the values, et cetera. So um, it's not more complex than this. Uh, than this. And this is what you would normally also do with, with an OR tools model or MIP model um, as well. Um, the difference here uh, for Nextmove or to, to be able to use it within our platform would be that you define, uh, this is a Python type app and uh, it runs on the OR tools runtime on our site. And it actually comes with a main.py uh, file, which is the entry point for our app. Um, but otherwise we can head back to the CLI and already Nextmove App create an app that we gonna call we're gonna call simply demo. Not very interesting, I guess. Uh, and then we can already in Nextmove app push this demo app from this directory to our platform. And you already can see in the help text here that you get like commands like sample commands like even using curl submitting first runs to this app. So what happened is that we pushed it to our platform, erected an endpoint already, and basically we can use it. And a convenient way of doing that is next move app run. Uh, again, the demo app, the input, we're going to use the input file that we just saw at the wait tag so that we actually wait for the output to come back. And so uh, then we're going to pipe it directly into JQ so that we can look at it in a more nice representation. And yeah, this is our answer. So. This is the solution, a bunch of items that we put into it. We decided to go with a cat because a cat person came up with the example. Um, but yeah, otherwise, uh, some statistics, uh, the solution is optimal. We solved it with skip and the value was 444. And that is basically all that is to it to get you started with an app on our platform um, based on our tools. With this, I'm going to hand it back to Daniel. Okay. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Marius. Um, so let's open the slides again. Um, yeah, so basically what have you seen uh, in, in Mario's presentation is um, you uh, he showed you um, how to initialize the OR tools template, um, create an application, push the application or push the model to the application. Uh, and uh, he did his first successful run with his OR tools model within Nextmove Cloud. Um, so these steps, initializing a template, pushing, running, um, is all part of uh, what you think um, about the deployment as it should be uh, for a decision model. Um, so we don't want um, the user to spend too much time on um, everything around install and configure. Uh, we don't we don't want the user to spend too much time on deployment here, uh, so that um, the user um, can um, spend um, time on building his model um, and running it locally or in cloud um, for testing, integration, and production purposes. 
Um, so um, coming back to our uh, decision ops uh, process, um, we just looked at the develop part here. Um, let's look at uh, some of the next steps, which, which are test, tune, and review. Um, so within our platform, um, we offer you ways to create, manage, uh, and review experiments with your models. Um, so the screenshots that you see here uh, on the slide are actually from our product. product. Um, so you can go into our console, uh, into our front end, and create experiments uh, in order to compare your uh, current baseline model with uh, possible candidate models, for example. Uh, we also give you building blocks to uh, manage your development pipeline the way you need uh, it uh, to be. Um, so let's say you have um, different customer regions where you are using different parameter settings, um, or maybe um, the regions actually have different constraints and objectives. Um, so you can easily use our instances and platform um, to set this up um, and have the region separate from each other. Uh, but you can also set up um, classically um, the two-tier or three-tier structure with the development, staging, production environment, for example. So with these uh, two components, um, the experimentation part and the um, dev workflow part or the dev pipeline here, um, those need to exist in order to build out a testing integration flow. Um, so when you look at this slide, you see a probably familiar uh, picture of a Git flow. Um, and taking this as an inspiration um, was our, um, our idea um, to use that to build out a testing integration or testing integrations at different stages um, of the modeling of decision models uh, and the deployment process um, in order to reduce risk um, when you um, try to um, put your models into production. So in, in the uh, sense of decision ops here, um, if you think about uh, the workflow and decision ops, um, taking that all in mind here, um, we want to reduce risk of having um, faulty optimization models uh, in production uh, or models that are not um, well performant. Um, and in order to uh, do that, to redu reduce this risk, um, you can use a bunch of um, our experimentation features and techniques to uh, mitigate it, that risk. So if you look at the bottom of the slide, um, there's a baseline uh, model uh, and you have a candidate model. Um, so you're iterating on the candidate model. Uh, you're running batch experiments in our platform to make sure that the candidate model uh, is performing well and gives you good solution quality. Um, then at some point you say, um, awesome, this model looks great. Um, I want to um, compare it against the baseline model. Uh, so you can start an acceptance test and define your own um, custom KPIs um, that, you, that you care about for your use case. Um, in order to compare the performance of the candidate to the to the baseline model. If that is all looking great, uh, you might want to say, okay, this is already at a place uh, where I might consider this as a, a production-ready model. Uh, so you can use our shadow um, test features um, to uh, create shadow tests with um, your candidate model um, and still have your baseline model in production. Um, what then happens is actually that you see um, parallel runs in your um, shadow model or in your candidate model here um, that are then tested in the shadow test. Um, we are currently also working on switchback tests um, that you can use then in the future as well to um, get even further um, confidence in your, in your model. And all of this um, leads nicely into a, a continuous integration and deployment workflow for your decision models. Um, and that's something that Marius will now share um, in his uh, next live demonstration here. Sure. Thank you, Daniel. And sharing again. And now we're going to start in console. And I'm going to catch you up here one second uh, with the app. So we looked at the demo app before. This is what I just pushed. So you can see that it's already is also existing here, but we're not going to use it because it's not very complex. Instead, we're going to use a, an example of vehicle routing problem uh, or solving a vehicle routing problem with our tools and um, yeah this app is more interesting <clears throat> as we will see in a bit uh, to demo uh, all these test workflows around it or the automatic workflows around it so right so this app defines uh, an instance like daniel already mentioned uh, which is a production instance and this production instance is the default. So all of our runs actually go to this instance. And uh, this is interesting because we can split it uh, into another instance like development. And like Daniel mentioned, we are going to test everything with development before actually swapping out uh, the production version. And uh, the versions are 
which is also interesting to see uh, in this example created automatically. So all of them have a Git char actually on them because they will be, every time we merge something in our code, uh, we will automatically create a version that we can later reference. And uh, then you also find other things in the console like your run history, et cetera, and the experiments. And that is actually something that we're gonna get back to. So let's head over to the code. This uh, app actually exists in GitHub and uh, is managed here. And so uh, there are other things, so it's more complex. You will notice that it still has this main.py file for the entry point, but it has uh, further source files in here in the app directory. It also defines some tests that are actually running automatically before merge. And then we also have a next move action, which is interesting to look at. And that is where we're gonna head over to the pull request because we have one open here. And uh, this pull request changes the model. It introduces a max travel duration and a parameter to set for it, et cetera. Um, and uh, yeah, everything is fine here. We can merge it, uh, all tests passed. And one thing that will happen as soon as I do this, it kicks off an action, like I mentioned, the next move action here. And uh, this one, and the background now does a couple of things. And let me explain that while it is running because it takes a little bit to run. Um, so this one will run on the code that we just merged and pushed. Um, it will create, uh, basically bundle and package our new app and push it to the platform, to the next move platform. And then it will also update the version inside of the development instance. So, uh, and that instance we're gonna use in a test actually to compare it against the production instance, which would be the baseline here. And so, uh, yeah, like I said, this takes a little bit of time and it's a live demo. So maybe take, let me use the time to actually ask everyone here for some feedback. It would be actually re really great to uh, get some knowledge about the world that you live in. So we obviously live in a GitHub world and uh, use GitHub pipelines here uh, to a good extent and uh, can integrate this here nicely. But obviously you might be using GitLab or some different CICD uh, provider. And it would be really interesting to know your world and how you, we could help. Because for example, we could offer a GitHub action that you could more easily integrate, although this is not a lot of steps to get this off the ground manually, but uh, something that we could make, make even easier. But it would be nice to have some feedback about that. Yeah, otherwise this is hopefully finally done. I'm expecting like one and a half minute or something. And yeah, so this just kicked off the acceptance test. And if it's nice, it will also provide me with a link so that I can go there directly. And yes, nice. And it's even completed already. So I guess it was a little async. So this is an acceptance test and uh, we just merged our code and now we're interested in, do we actually wanna deploy this? And for this, we defined a couple of KPIs and the directions that we expect them to go, either not changing or basically should decrease, for example, we are looking at again at a VRP. So we're minimizing travel duration and other things. And uh, so we expect our objective value to decrease or that is the direction that we want it to go. Um, activated vehicles, we actually want to increase. So uh, let me pick one of these. We already can see that all of them are green lit. So it behaved like we expected it to be uh, or to do. And, but let's pick one of them because they're actually more interested in, in the details. Also, especially if, if it wouldn't behave as expected, it's really interesting to dig down, uh, dig here a little bit for more um, uh, results or more details. And uh, what you can see here is the development instance against the production instance on a number of seven inputs. And uh, also even in the scatter plot, like comparing both of them on the same metric which is activated vehicles. So you can see the development instance uses more vehicles than the production instance, which is on the x-axis. Um, so every one of these inputs falls in the upper half of this diagonal. And uh, this is what exactly what we want uh, to happen. And to show you that this is actually also happening and also uh, to yeah show you how you can use this feature even further to debug. So let's go to the actual runs and on one of the inputs here in this DEFIN 6K, we're gonna look at both the results, the production result and the development result and see that the behavior is in fact uh, what we saw there in the 
and the acceptance test. So you can see the virtualization here on the right side. This is uh, the solution of the production instance. And uh, as you can see, there are a lot of vehicles only having two stops, which is actually just start at the depot and stay at the depot. So we're not actually using them. So, uh, and this in uh, this result uses two vehicles only. And uh, the uh, development instance in, in STAT uses all of the vehicles. So that's why we can see all the activated vehicles going up uh, across the board. And yeah, and this would give you more uh, insights. So cool. So this uh, already tells us that acceptance test is passed. So we're fine with the result here. That builds us with some confidence, but uh, maybe we're not completely convinced because the acceptance test actually uh, works on an input set that we defined at some point. But we could be thinking about, well, our new production data could could be different now. Uh, and for that, we offer a shadow test. Um, let me copy this name. Uh, so I'm creating that one next. And the shadow test uh, is really easy to set up. We just use a baseline instance, which is production, what we want to compare against. And again, the development instance is our new candidate. And we're, done, we're going to define some end condition for this uh, shadow test, which is, which is going to be 10 runs, and then just start it. And uh, this is a really interesting way of uh, of building confidence as well, because, and I'm going to head over here just to explain starting a script, because this is obviously just a demo app, so this doesn't really receive any runs, <laughs> except for mine. Um, but uh, yeah, so let's spawn some runs here and run them in the background, send some inputs to uh, the endpoint. And uh, in the meantime, look at the results of the shadow test, which is doing a comparison um, of production instance against development instance on new inputs. So this is live data, this is new data, and uh, we can safely test them side by side without, uh, let me reload, uh, without uh, actually putting a production into danger in, in any way. Uh, so it's still started, still running. We see the first six runs already came in here, and we can see all the different metrics again, like the value, or let's do the custom activated vehicles, which we looked at before. So we're using more in development than in production and everything as well here uh, behaves as expected. So I'm actually convinced that this is fine. So I'm not going to wait for this to complete, but instead already put the new version into production. And I'm simply going to do this. This is really quick uh, by using the same version that we just tested in development and go to the production instance, edit it, and select this version, and save it. And this is it. Now it's already in production, and we updated production, so every new run uh, will go to this new version of the model. And as exactly as, as I updated it to the new version, I can obviously also revert it to the old version if something goes wrong or anything happens. Yes, and that is it from my side. Uh, heading back to Daniel. Yeah, awesome. Uh, thank you, Marius. Um, let me quickly open my slides again. All right. Yeah, so um, just a couple of takeaways um, here at the end of our presentation. Um, so what have you seen here in, in um, on the slides and in the live demo? Um, well, you saw that you can bring your complete or work in progress or art tools models to the next move platform. Um, um, iterate um, on the models uh, in Python uh, and deploy those uh, models to a hosted uh, managed uh, infrastructure in just a couple of minutes, right? So you saw that uh, Marius just did it in, in a few minutes. Um, he merged a model change uh, into the um, into his main branch um, and he ran experiments um, on that to uh, see whether um, what kind of results the acceptance tests um, are showing um, and he also ran some shadow tests to de-risk his, uh, de his production rollouts. Um, so yeah, and with that, um, I think, Reno, we um, can open the Q&A session here. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you both for a great presentation and live demos. Very exciting to see. So yeah, we have a few questions that have come in. And I will start with the first one. We had a couple of folks ask, what is switchback testing? Yeah, um, let me go back to the screen here, uh, to the slide once more. So um, yeah, um, I mentioned before, and you saw it in, in Mario's uh, live demonstration, um, that you can use acceptance tests to compare um, your 
um, candidate model with the baseline model with on historic data. Um, then he ran his shadow uh, test um, where he had his production um, model still running um, on the daily operations data that's coming in. Um, but in parallel, so as a shadow, he had his candidate model um, running. Um, and now if you think about um, switchback testing here, you're actually using the candidate model in a production setting. Um, so you still have your production model, um, but you also now have your candidate model. Um, and um, this will be uh, changed um, in this process, process of switchback testing um, so that in the end, you also use the solutions of your candidate model in the production setting. So before in the shadow run or in the shadow test, um, you only use the um, original baseline model and the outputs um, or the solutions in your production environment. Now with switchback testing, you would go a step further and use the results of your candidate model as well in production um, as the uh, as the baseline model um, to see if if you have any um, yeah what what kind of uh, solutions you get and how this performs in, in in a real setting here. Yeah, the motivation is is mainly that you can see the effects also on the rest of your operations, right? So that you you know in a timely in a periods of time, um, while shadow testing those results won't affect your rest of the remaining operations, right? Thank you. Okay, jump into the next question. Uh, it says, it looks like you support Go and Python. Do you have support for other languages? I can take that. Um, basically, uh, we're focused on Python and uh, Go at the moment, but we're definitely interested in, in widening our scope, right? Uh, also for, you know, uh, in general, things that we support, like different different solvers, technologies, etc., we would really like to to uh, offer a variety, and we would really be keen about feedback on that and what we should push for first, um, because it's obviously a challenge too, to some extent, to support everything. But uh, we definitely know that that uh, some other languages, some other tools, would be really interesting to see on our platform. Great. Thank you. It looks like we are just about wrapping up on time here. I think uh, Ryan, our, our CTO, has been answering some questions in the chat. If there are questions that you didn't get to ask live or we didn't get to answer live, not to worry. Please reach out if you have a new question and we are more than happy to, to chat through it with you. So as far as next steps, please go try uh, Next Move for free. You can sign up for a free account, get into console, what uh, Marius was showing, and, and start playing around there. Talk with our team. Like I said, if you have any other questions, please reach out to us. And uh, you know, take a look at our resources. We have a lot of documentation, great blogs and videos, you know, um, on different types of testing, on um, you know, just OR tools in general, and you know, our, our modeling framework. So please take a look at those. And uh, thank you again for joining. We will see you next time.